Today we are very pleased to have uh, Sidney Shapiro with us. He is one of the rare foreigners to be granted Chinese citizenship. He has uh, lived through uh, China's civil war and witnessed uh, its economic revolution. Uh, Mr. Shapiro, uh, how did you end up in uh, China? It's a very long story. Mm. I came during World War II mm -hmm. as part of a specialized training program in the U U.S. Army. Mm. And I was assigned to study Chinese because the, uh, they were training people in the armed forces, Army, Naval, Marines, on the possibility that they would have to be sent to foreign countries to go with American expeditionary forces. Mm -hmm. And so I was put into the Chinese program. Mm -hmm. And uh, I became so fascinated mm -hmm. by the language and the culture that when the war was over, I didn't want to go back to being a young lawyer in New York City, which I had been. And I just wanted to learn more about the history and the culture. Mm. And so I got on a freighter mm. and traveled through the Panama Canal and arrived in Shanghai mm -hmm. in 1947. Okay. So when you first arrived in Shanghai, how did you feel about the city? Well, I was amazed. I, I'd never seen anything like it. It was dirty and noisy and crowded mm -hmm. and corrupt and economically collapsing, but wonderful people, mm -hmm. very lively and uh, creative people uh, who had great courage and able to cope with their difficulties. Mm -hmm. The local people uh, in Shanghai, did they speak a bit of uh, English? No, they, they could. They can communicate with. They they uh, they couldn't speak uh, Mandarin Chinese. They couldn't speak Putonghua. Oh, okay. They only spoke Shanghai dialect, and they were very parochial. That is, they treated all people from other parts of China as foreigners. Mm -hmm. You know, very narrow. But they were the people that I met were very friendly and very kind and. Uh, entertained me and lived in their homes for a little while. Mm -hmm. You translated the book Shui Hu Zhuan, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, Do you consider translating this book as one of your uh, greatest achievements? And uh, we understand that this book actually saved your life during uh, the Cultural Revolution. Can you explain more about it? Well, Shui Hu Zhuan, of course, is one of the great classics of China. In fact, it's a, a world classic. And there have been other translations before. But I was lucky in that I had a great deal of help from many different people, from my colleagues, my wife, mm -hmm. who was a very well-educated Chinese, mm -hmm. actually a scholar and a writer herself, mm -hmm. and who was very familiar with classics and the colloquial thing. I understand that this book actually saved your life during the Cultural Revolution. You know, how, 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 how was that to, to be? Well, it was rather amusing, you see, because this was at the time when the uh, Jiang Qing, uh, Mao's wife, and what was called the Gang of Four, the very reactionary people, they were opposed to this translation, the title that I, I gave it originally, I thought, Shui Hu Zhuan, how can you put it into English, you see? If you do it literally, it doesn't make much sense to foreign readers. So I chose Heroes of the Marsh. But uh, uh, Jiang Qing and the Gang of Four were violently against that title because they were obliquely trying to attack Zhou and Lai, which I won't even attempt to explain. And so they said that these outlaws, these, these uh, uh, opponents of the regime in ancient times were not heroes, that they were 
traitors and so on. And, and so on. I, so in order to fool them, I said, well, okay, if you don't like heroes, why don't we just say outlaws? Mm -hmm. And their English was not very good, so they didn't understand that in English, outlaws is a good term, mm -hmm. like Robin Hood and mm -hmm. all of these folk heroes. So they let me get away with it, and so that, that was the title that the book appeared in, uh, in English in, in, in many countries. At that time, while I was doing this translation during the Cultural Revolution, the Foreign Languages Press, the office that I belonged to, was split into two factions, each claiming to be on, the only real, genuine Marxist, Mao Zedong, Sasang, and all that. And sometimes they would, one side would attack the other side, and there was violence, and people were even killed. Mm -hmm. But because this was such an important novel, and it was so great, it didn't matter whether this faction seized power or that faction seized power. They both wanted to take credit for this translation having been made under their leadership, you see. So they left me alone. I see. <laughs> in that way, in a sense, it, 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 it saved me from maybe a lot of trouble. Yeah, yeah. Can you tell us uh, your deep relationship with uh, the Communist Party? Do you feel uh, like you had been you know, a propaganda tool of the Communist Party at any point of your life? Well, I am not a communist. I'm, no, I'm not a member of the Communist Party mm. in America, and I never joined the Communist Party in China. But I have great admiration for the Chinese Communist Party mm. and uh, great respect for them, and in general, I support of their principles and their policies mm -hmm. in general, but of course I'm also critical on some issues and some matters. You are, you know, a Chinese citizen at the moment, right? Yes. And uh, do, uh, do you feel more uh, an American uh, or Chinese now? You know, how do you describe your trip back to America, you know, being a, you know, a Chinese citizen? Well, I'm often asked that question, you mm -hmm. see, and if I feel that I'm lucky because I can enjoy the best of both cultures and bo both societies. Why should I have to choose between delicious Chinese food and good steak and lamb chops and so on? Uh, I, I, I'm, of course, I'm joking. So I want to absorb and enjoy and take the benefits out of best. So there's no, in my mind, there's no conflict. Mm. Mm. So do you, feel, do you still feel at home in, uh, when you travel back to America? Usually, <laughs> I, feel, I feel at home for about two or three weeks. Oh, I see. And then I get bored because I'm not interested in things that used to interest me before, local things, local elections and ball games and who has a new car and who has a better automobile and so on, you know. So uh, it's not part of me anymore. So I'm happy to see friends and of course America is very beautiful, lovely scenery and many cultural things that I like. But uh, as I say, after about two or three weeks I get bored and I just come back, though I have no time limit on my visits abroad. We want to thank Mr. Shapiro, who also has a Chinese name, uh, Sa Poli, uh, for, sh for spending time with us today and also sharing with us uh, such an amazing experience. See you.